Hello everyone and welcome to Real Life Racing episode 7 and as you're probably about to notice there is a very different camera view for this round as you can see it's right on the front bumper. That wasn't my decision I've had to place it there and that's kind of the best place that I've been able to put it after experimenting a little bit but I will explain a little bit more about that later on but that's what we've got at the moment. So I'll get straight into this first race. Now it seems like over the past few rounds the first race has always been pretty bad for me I've, I've had some really rotten luck um, and this is this is no different really I actually qualified in 15th place out of 23 and I was 13 seconds off the pace in terms of my qualifying time to the leader now I don't think I've ever been 13 seconds off the pace ever even when I started doing this the track is wet it is starting to dry slightly obviously as you can see there are some dry patches forming but I've ne I'd never I've never been that far off the pace. Now I do make up some positions at the start as you can see here, but there is a very significant problem with this cart. So the cart allocation is as I've mentioned before in previous episodes completely random. So you don't know what you're going to get and this one after this race after I'd notified them about the problem with the cart they took it off completely and didn't use it for the rest of the round. So there was definitely a significant problem with this cart and it's mainly in turning left you'll see an example throughout the course of this race where just it, it does not want to turn left at any point it's going around right hand turns is okay in a straight line it's okay but especially this long left hander that you're about to come up to now it's just it just the cart does not want to turn so i'm having a significant issues with it and i'm nowhere near on the pace and i could you know you could say that I've been getting unlucky with that and, and it's it's kind of wearing a bit thin that I'm sort of getting unlucky in these first races and having to work my way back up through. I'd rather just sort of stay at the front if you like. But I, I, I have to put some blame on myself for this one because I, I could feel during the qualifying that the cart wasn't wasn't right you know there was definitely something wrong with it and really it should have I should have brought it in and swapped it over you know you can do that. So that was that was partly my own fault, you know. I, yes, I got a bad cart, I got a bit unlucky, but I should have recognised that and brought it in and got it changed for one that was going to perform better and didn't have a problem. So, you know, there is there is some aspect to that where that is actually my fault and, and if I'd... I don't know whether it's some sort of, like, confidence thing where I feel I'm not quite... You know, it, it might just... I still, on some level, think... I'm not driving very well and that's why I'm off the pace and obviously I don't know that I'm you know 13 seconds off the pace until after the first race when I actually get the lap times so you know there, there probably is still some part of me that has that confidence issue to you know I, I don't necessarily have the, the same experience to fully believe in the fact that it, it is the cart and not just myself having a bad day for example but yeah, this was so noticeable that really I should have brought it in. I should have, I should have changed the card over. And this is what you can see here. You know, I made up a few positions at the start, but as the race is going on and people are starting to find their feet, even the the ridiculous line that he's just taken into there, I can't do anything about it because the card just doesn't want to turn the left hand, the left hander of the chicane. So, you know, when it comes to left hand corners, I'm just getting overtaken and I just fall back through the pack as you're seeing here and as you'll see in this little bit of a clip but this is where it's sort of most noticeable you know I just I can't do the same lines that other people are doing you know they're, they're just able to get around the corners much much tighter they've got much much more grip and this is this is probably the the section where you'll notice it the most so I'm not too bad in a straight line as you're seeing here at this point my motivation has just totally gone so there's no point I'm not really thinking about uh, overtaking going into the first corner because it is wet anywhere on the out anywhere apart from on the outside but as you can see I'm able to stick with him there and as soon as it comes to the the left hander there I'm just I just lose so much time and I get overtaken there again and then when it comes to the left hander further down here as well despite me being able to stay with these guys in the right in the right handers I, I just lose so much time and I just it just the cart just does not want to turn it's a complete handful so I end up finishing in 17th place out of 23 pretty terrible I think my best lap time in the race was six seconds off the the best lap time of, of the the person who won 
And yeah, it's just been the story of these first races so far. It seems like I'm always, I always get a bit unlucky or I'm always way down the, the field in the first race. And that's causing me to have to work my way back up in the second race. And that, you know, even if you do that, that means that points wise, you know, the, the round is already gone, you know, in terms of championship wise, I'm not really looking to win the championship this year because of all of these issues that I've had. I just don't have the the points anymore. I'm really just hoping to to stay third. Um, but yeah, you know, if you have one bad race, then that's that's terrible for your points. Even though you get some good results in the previous race, the the next few races, it doesn't really matter because you've had such a bad result in the first race, and that pretty much ruins everything. And it also affects you know your position for the final. So. Yeah, I'm starting to get a bit sick of having a, a terrible first race and I'm going to see what I can do to improve that in the next round. Hopefully I can actually get a, a decent first race under my belt and, and start, uh, hit the ground running if you like, you know. That that would be nice rather than having to work my way back up through the pack, which is what I'm, I have to do now. Having finished all the way down here in the second race, I do gradually work my way up through the pack as you'll see. But... To talk more about the angle, the camera angle that we've got, now I know already that you're already disappointed because I was and it's nowhere near as good as having it on my helmet, on the top of my helmet which is where it used to be. So you know when it was there I, th I thought that was the best place that you could ever have it because it's as high as it possibly can so you see the most stuff. When I turn my head to look at certain things you see that as well. That's what it's all about having it on your helmet. And for me, that was the best place. But unfortunately, the track has now banned GoPros from being applied to the helmet or uh, the, anywhere on the body. So I'm left with having to find a place on the cart to, uh, to put the GoPro on, which is a bit of a shame because, as you can see, it's not quite as good. Now, at this point, I'll just go back to the race. I got a great start there by... I made up so many positions before this point of the, the track, and I think a lot of people were... A little bit too uh, cautious around those first few corners because it was slightly damp and I, you know I just had a race where I'd finished 17th I just figured I'd just go for it um, and, and the cart did grip I had the grip and, and the, the, the track was dry enough so I made up a load of positions and I'm gradually making up positions as you can see here and that's what I gradually do throughout the course of this race as well you know I make up position after position starting from 17th working my way back up through the pack so it's quite an interesting one for in that regard but again as i said i would rather just be sort of finishing in those top five top six positions every race and not really having to work my way back up through the pack i know it, it's a lot more fun and it's a lot more entertaining to see me come back through the pack but yeah i i'd, I'd rather just you know be up there fighting and having some good races all the time but yeah, the, the the track has now banned GoPros from anywhere being being applied anywhere on your helmet or on your body, which is a huge shame. And you know, there's not a lot I can do about it. I can it's it's supposedly a safety safety aspect, and and I think the the MSA, the Motorsports Association, which is sort of the 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 main motorsports association in the UK, I think they've done the same thing, and it's sort of filtered down into karting and stuff like that. I can understand it when it comes to really high level stuff and much higher speeds in terms of karting as well and, and motor racing in general. You know, having a GoPro on your helmet isn't exactly the safest thing to do. But when it's something like this, you know, it's it's just, it's a bit of a shame. It, it's not exactly the, the highest speeds. It's not exactly the highest level. It's just, we all just do this for a bit of fun and just to have some good racing. So it is a bit of a shame that I can no longer have the GoPro on my helmet. Now, I'm going to try and experience... Experience? No, that's not what I wanted to say. I'm going to try and experiment a little bit with a few different positions for the camera on the cart. This was sort of... I did, I did a little bit of testing with uh, a few different positions. This one is certainly easily the most secure, um, this position right here. So, you know, very much on the front bumper. And there's probably the least amount of vibration as well the least amount of, of bouncing up and down and things like that because it is on a very specific you know it, it's on it's on the metal of the cart so whatever the cart is doing the camera is doing as well so you do get the experience and and i guess there is a, a benefit of that you know you're seeing how the cart is moving a lot more than 
when you do on my helmet um you know you can you can see little small changes in direction that you wouldn't necessarily normally see but yeah i'm going to try and experiment with a few different positions i might have this one for the next uh, the next round as well but i'll see what i can do to basically try and give you guys the best view of what's happening but let me know down below in the comments what you think about this camera view especially and and are you disappointed about it not being on my helmet or do you even like this camera camera angle is it is it not too bad uh you know let me know i'm always always open to your thoughts i would as i said try and experiment with a few different positions but uh yeah unfortunately i can no longer have it on the top of my helmet which is a bit of a shame because really i think that's uh, that's certainly where it was best so yeah that's that's got that out of the way and uh as you can see i'm gradually catching up to the well not really gradually it's pretty quickly that i'm catching up to these two guys i've made my way up into seventh place and now i'm already fighting to get up into fifth now the the guy in front of me just here he's been trying to get in front of this guy in front of him for a while so he decides to uh, move over to the side and basically let me go now the reason that he did that is as he, he explained to me afterwards and i guessed as much is that he'd been stuck behind the guy in the red for you know quite a while well for pretty much the whole race and he'd saw how quickly i'd come up uh, i'd come up on them you know i was a lot quicker than them at that stage so it was pretty much inevitable that he was going to i was going to be able to overtake both of them eventually because there's still plenty of the race to go so he decided to basically let me go and then try to follow me through when i inevitably overtake the guy in the red and it, it almost worked out for him i don't think he managed to get him by the end but it was a good strategy uh, but ultimately as you can see here you know i just do have a bit of a cart advantage in this race uh, he tries to force me onto the wet patch but i'm not having really any any of it and i just uh, managed to get around and that's pretty much it for this race i end up finishing in fifth place i do catch the guys ahead of me there's basically four of them all battling for the lead of the race i do end up catching up to those a little bit uh, certainly, you know, you, you'll be able to see them at the, at the hairpin and you, you, you can compare with uh, how, the, how close I am to them on the last lap. So I am gradually catching up to them, but it's not really enough to uh, make an impression where I'm going to be able to get involved with their battle. And it, it's pretty much a carbon copy of the, the previous round, you know, that was exactly the same thing. I had a really bad first race and the cart broke on me. Uh, I caught up during the second race and the third race I ended up winning now it, it's it's a lot to ask to do that again but it's it's just you know it's a shame that I'm having to go through this every single time I'd, I'm hoping that I can actually have a good race first off straight away in the next round but yeah it was a reasonably inter entertaining race I hope you enjoyed watching that one the first half of it anyway you know working my way up from 17th to 5th it, it shows that I've still got the pace you know but uh yeah it's a shame that i have to keep doing that and keep working my way back up through the pack so as we come on to the third race this is where i'm starting obviously in fifth place you start where you finished the previous race so i'm starting higher up this time so i do have a chance to have a bit of fun with uh you know dry, end, ending up um racing against the top guys and and doing some proper racing for the the higher up positions and that's and that's what happens in this race now I'm not going to be showing the whole of this race. I'm actually going to be doing a very, very short highlight so that, you, that you're watching right now because I'm going to be doing a dual commentary with Smithy, who I've talked about. I think I talked about him quite a lot in the previous episode. Go and watch that if you don't know who he is. But he also he races GTA with us a lot, and he's actually the guy in the blue suit who's ju just in front of us here. So we have a really interesting and entertaining race in this one. For a huge number of reasons you're going to see a few sort of little highlights here but it's quite controversial as well not necessarily between us but just some of the things that happen throughout the course of this race are frankly ridiculous and because we were both involved and we were both you know battling with each other as well it makes sense to do a dual commentary on it because he has his own channel where he's he does commentaries and things like that as well so i'm going to do that with him and put the video up it should be up by the time you're watching this so i will leave a link in the description i'll try and put it somewhere on the uh on the screen as well but i'll also uh remind you at the end definitely go check out that video because it's going to 
basically talk about this race in full. I'll show the full race. You'll be able to see moments like this and we'll be able to talk through it from both of our perspectives. And as I said, there is there are a few controversial moments in general in this race and it was it got us both riled up let's put it that way so it will be an interesting one to see what we've both got to say about that it all generally revolves around pretty shocking racing let's put it that way and not very clean racing between us and some of the guys in front of us and, and one person in particular who's quite new to the championship who i'll also be mentioning in the uh the final of this uh of this round so yeah it's it's controversial that's all i'm going to say about it definitely go check it out the link will be down in the description so you can watch it on his channel also obviously subscribe to him as well if you like the video but yeah definitely click the link in the description so you can watch that and uh, it should be a good it should be a good dual commentary to do because you'll get both perspectives um and and you'll hear us both talk about our thoughts throughout the course of this race especially a moment like that <laughs> So yeah, definitely do that. I ended up actually finishing third place in this race, which you know wasn't too bad. We it was pretty much a four-way battle for the lead all the way through the race, which was you know it was reasonably close, but it was just such a such a controversial one. Um, but yeah, I ended up finishing in third, which wasn't too bad. You know that's that's kind of the area where I want to be finishing. That's I, that's good points for the championship, and if I hadn't had that bad race that would be great points for me but it's just you know that first race always brings it all down at the end so there you have it you know like i said check the description or open up the the, the video in a separate tab before you uh, so you can finish watching this one and then you can go straight into that but here we are for the final i actually started in the seventh place for the final again as i said you know that that bad first race really does cost you because it your points throughout the course of the round determine your standing position for the final as well um and i actually couldn't see the start line you might have seen it the, the start light you might have seen it there um the the, the manager second manager who was standing there for the start of the race actually was hiding the light obscuring the start light so i couldn't see when it went from red to green so i got a really really bad start which is a bit of a shame um but ultimately I make up a position there, as you saw, to go from seventh to sixth, and I've just, I've just thought, you know, little things like that, little things. That's, that's kind of what's been happening throughout the whole of this season. It seems like all of this season has been little bits of bad luck here and there um, that have either given me a bad result or, you know, just a tiny little thing like that. Whereas the, you know, the the Callum Cleet, who I spoke about in the previous episode, he was starting right next to me. Um, he saw the light and now he's further up up the grid uh, he's he's already into third place i couldn't see the light and i'm still in sixth it's just little things like that really annoying me this season but uh, yeah that that's kind of what that's all about um so yeah i i got up into sixth place and now i'm getting up into fifth place here this is a bit more of a tricky uh, tricky overtake because he's still there on the inside and you would be able to see that a lot better with the helmet camera unfortunately because i'm obviously you know looking in that way and and you'd have a much wider angle of it which is that's that's kind of those moments where it's a bit of a shame that we don't have that helmet camera because you can't really see what's going on to the right or to the left of me as much with the camera like this but that's what we've got to deal with unfortunately so yeah i'm up into fifth place and i am gradually catching up to the guys in front because they are battling but there's also very quick guys behind me as well, as you can see here, just on the left. I, I do defend, but he just drives past me like I'm not even there. You know, just these differences in carts that I've spoke about before. So, yeah, I'm I'm back down into sixth. You know, he, he was able to overtake me just on the straight. So I know that I'm not really going to be able to get back past him under normal circumstances. So I just decide to try my best to follow him through. And, you know, as you can see just ahead there's a little bit of a battle brewing you know that there's they're all slowing each other down and that's allowing the guy in front of me who's just overtaken me and myself to catch up now i'm not catching up at quite the same rate because you know the the, the guy in front's just in a in a quicker cart as you saw but this is the moment where you want to try and be a little bit opportunistic you want to be switched on to think if something happens here i want to be ready to 
make that make the best of it and tr maybe i'll may be able to make a few positions maybe you know i'll be able to make something happen just because they're battling just because you don't know what's going to happen they're slowing each other down you never ever know what what might come of it and this that's pretty pretty much exactly what happens as you can see here it all gets a bit Larry as you can see there um, They're all slowing each other down. I end up going up the inside here making up two positions I don't quite get on the inside of this guy, but I do for the next corner So I'm up into third place, which is great um, And at that point the job is done, but you can never come you can never really uh, Account for something like that, which is this is basically the same guy who me and Smithy had a lot of trouble with He's brand new to the championship. I think he's quite young as well if you want to, you know, know more about the the troubles that we had in the previous video, uh, in the not in the previous video, in 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 the previous race, again, that's in Smithy's video that I'll link in the description, the dual commentary. He's pretty much what we're going to be talking about all the way through because he's brand new to the championship and he just doesn't know how to race cleanly. As you saw there, I was actually completely ahead going into that right hander, and he just, you know, smashed into the inside of me and got the place. He gets a warning board. And that's pretty much it. You know, nothing really comes of it. He gets no penalty for it. And given his conduct in the previous race, which again is in in the in the dual commentary, um, it's amazing that he didn't get a black flag throughout the course of this race, uh, throughout the course of this round. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what we'll be talking about. And and although I didn't really have the the greatest cart in this final, it wasn't too bad. And I had to, you know, I was defending a little bit for the rest of the race. I, I was trying to stick with the two guys in front of me, but I wasn't really able to do any of it. And, and I ended up just finishing in fourth place. But that opportunistic sort of overtake to get up, up into uh, third initially is what helped me to get that fourth place. So um, it, it's definitely been a successful three races you know i've had a fifth place a third place and a fourth place it's just a shame that i had that initial 17th place that kind of really does ruin the points and and although i got some great points um when you when you you know completely take into account all of the troubles it's it's um it's certainly not championship level winning points if you like uh it i'm i'm definitely hoping to stay in uh, third place in the championship and hope to get a championship trophy by the end of it i'm not really looking at the the top two positions because cleat and smithy definitely have uh, have the edge in that way so yeah that's pretty much it for this one uh again click the link in the description to go watch uh, the dual commentary with smithy it's a, it'll be a really good one uh let me know all your thoughts about this camera angle down below as well i really i'd really appreciate knowing what you guys think about this and uh and is this camera angle okay i would as i said i'll experience with a few different others but are you disappointed that we can't have it on the helmet anymore so thank you so much for watching guys i really do appreciate it again leave all your thoughts down below leave a like if you enjoyed and i'll see you next time